Hi guys, this is Mr. Mitchell. Hi, Mrs. Buswa. And today we're going to discuss this concept called air resistance. Um, and we're going to do a quick demonstration as the model page suggested. So, uh, in the beginning of our energy unit, we did an experiment where you crashed cars down the ramp. And it was the same exact car, same exact ramp, same exact height. And so everything was the same, but we had different results because we set up our barriers a little differently. Um, for this, we're going to do kind of a similar scenario where it's, it's the same situation, but we're going to make one change and we'll see a lot different results. So we have two coffee filters, right? The little things you brew coffee in. And we're going to drop them. If we drop them from the same height at the same time, then we see they fall at basically the same rate. And they'll hit the ground at the same time. But just like in our car crash scenario, if we make one small change to one of these coffee filters, and drop them at the same time again, they fall at different rates. So one hits the ground way quicker than the other. The, the question is, why does that happen? So first of all, did we change the energy of either of these objects? No, right? They're both the same exact mass. They're dropped from the same exact height. So they should have the same amount of energy. Remember, work is just quantifying a change in energy. So the work would be the same as well. But the time is very different. So if we do it one more time, we see it's a, it's a difference in time. The first one that's all crumbled up hits way earlier than the other. What accounts for this? Well, it's this thing called air resistance. Air resistance is just like friction. Friction is on a surface in the ground, right? So I have two solids that rub against each other, and that causes friction. So some of the energy turns into heat. Well, in air, there's particles in the air. Maybe we can't see them, but as this one goes through the air, it's got a big area, so it grabs lots of air particles as it falls down towards the ground. Whereas this one, when we crumble it up, it doesn't catch as many air particles because it's taking up a smaller space. And so there's less air friction from this one than there is from this one because this is a lot larger. So this is a concept that you'll utilize. It was referenced in the Mythbusters video. Uh, they kind of used it to talk about this terminal velocity idea but it'll be important as we go forward moving with G2.